Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is explain to you what the inverse trigonometric functions are. And I'm just going to work with sine, cosine, and tangent here. Because usually students kind of get confused, but they eventually kind of understand sine, cosine, and tangent, at least the ratios. But then once we introduce the inverse signs, students just kind of, um, they lose it. They kind of just forget everything. So let's go back and just remember why we have the sine, cosine, tangent, what they mean, and then explain, use that to explain what the inverse functions mean. So I'm just going to use our typical triangle. Okay? And again, all trigonometry or trigonometric functions we're going to be using with a right triangle. Now, there's two other angles. I'll use one as theta and then one as alpha. We could give them x and y if you like. Okay? Now, remember on, the, on this triangle, we have a hypotenuse, which is directly across from our side. And then we have two sides. Now, depending on the triangle, or depending on which angle we're referring to, one is adjacent, one is opposite. If I'm going to refer to theta, then the side between theta and my 90 degrees is called our adjacent side. If I'm going to refer to alpha, the side between alpha and 90 degrees is called the adjacent side. The other side is called opposite. So if I call this my adjacent side, dealing with it theta, then this is my opposite side. In contrast, if I say alpha is my angle, then that's my adjacent, and this is my opposite. Okay. Now, typically, since we use uh, theta more often than using alpha, I'm just going to go ahead and work with that. And I'm going to call this the adjacent side and this the opposite side. Now, actually, never mind. Hold on a second. OK. That doesn't really make sense, because I didn't explain why I'm choosing which angle which I'm choosing. OK? So we have our two sides, right? We know the hypotenuse is always kind of um, always there. Now, the sine, cosine, and tangent basically are just ratios. They're basically a comparison. All they're comparing is the, the sine is just comparing the length of this side of the, or sorry, the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. How does the opposite side compare to the hypotenuse? Because we know the hypotenuse is the longest leg of the triangle, or longest side of the triangle. So we have two other legs. It could be an opposite or hypotenuse. So the sine represents which one is the opposite. So again, it's major important. If I want to say the sine of theta, what that means is, OK, so theta. So that means this is opposite, and this is the adjacent, which I already wrote up there. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now let's, give, um, let's, do, let's do a special right triangle. Or not a special right triangle, but a Pythagorean triple. So if I said this 5, 4, 3, therefore, the ratio is a comparison of the opposite, opposite side over the hypotenuse. 5 over 4. Now, in contract, if I said sine of alpha, then alpha, I said this was the adjacent, and this was the opposite. So the sine of alpha is not the, sine, is not the same as sine of theta. The sine of alpha is 3 over 5. Okay, That's not the point of this video. But I really want you to understand sine, the trigonometric functions are just ratios. But they depend on which angle we're talking about. So the cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent, which is, oh, sorry, let's do this. Um, let's do tangent of theta, which is theta. So that's going to be opposite over adjacent. Oops, OK. Um, opposite, oh, what am I doing? Opposite over hypotenuse. That's adjacent, oops, OK. Adjacent over hypotenuse which is 3 over 5. I just want to write these in there so in case you do not know. That's opposite over adjacent, which is 4 over 3. But we want you to know that the sine of alpha is 3 over 5. The um, cosine of alpha is 4 over 5. And the tangent of alpha is 3 over 4. Okay, So it all depends on which angle you're referring to. Now. The trigonometric functions, so again, if you notice, the major important thing is we're always taking the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle because it's saying, what is that ratio in related to that angle? Now, the inverse functions is kind of saying the exact opposite. It's not saying, what is, um, what, is the relate, what is that ratio of the two sides? It's saying, what angle gives me this relationship? So for instance, if I said sine of negative 1, it, our inverse sine of 4 fifths, what angle is that giving is that give me? Well, what is the, the inverse of 4 over 5 is equal to this theta. 
right? If I said that was 45 degrees, then you'd say it's equal to 45 degrees, right? We're not going to say 45 degrees, we're going to say alpha. But what if I said the sine inverse of 3 over 5? Then I'm basically saying what angle has the relationship of its opposite over hypotenuse? What angle is that? Well, remember, the sine of alpha was 3 over 5. So the inverse sine of 3 over 5 is alpha. The cosine. The cosine inverse, what ratio? So what angle gives me the ratio of, let's say, 3 over 5? That angle is theta. But if I said the cosine inverse of 4 over 5, that is alpha. Uh, the cosine in, or the tangent inverse of 4 over 3, oops, sorry, of 4 over 3 is equal to theta. And the tangent inverse of 3 over 4 is equal to alpha. So the major important thing, again, that I really wanted to kind of drive home with this video is you know, sine, cosine, and tangent, they're all relative to which angle you're talking about. The hypotenuse always remains the same, but the opposite adjacent changed based on the angle. Are you talking about alpha or alpha or theta? Because remember, the adjacent side is always between your angle and your 90 degrees. Always between your angle and your 90 degrees. And the opposite is always directly across from it. So, but the sine, cosine, tangent are, again, ratios. They're comparisons. How does the opposite side compare to the hypotenuse? Adjacent side compared to the hypotenuse, and tangent compared to the opposite or adjacent, all relative to the angle that you're talking about. Whereas the inverse function is basically saying, hey, I have this ratio of two sides of a triangle. What side is it in related to? So if I say sine inverse of 4 over 5, what angle gives me that ratio or comparison? And therefore you can, and again, you know, this would work with, um, now obviously, I'm just showing you in picture in here, but if you type in your calculator, we can actually figure that out. If I type in, now again, you want to make sure your calculator is in, in degrees or radians or degrees. So if I did sine inverse of 4 divided by 5, let's see what that gives me. That gives me 53 degrees. And if I did sine inverse of 3 over 5, that gives me 38.86. And again, this is just rounding. Plus 90 degrees, that's all going to add up to 180. So that gives me alpha. That gives me theta. They're all going to add up to, um, that all adds up to 180 degrees. Obviously, I had to uh, round here a little bit. But that's going to all add up to 180 degrees. So I'd have to round this up to 7. There you go. Plus your 90 degrees, that works. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just kind of a basic introduction as well as explanation as far as what are your inverse trigonometric functions. Thanks. Hello.